Hey, what is up guys and welcome to a new 3D Pilot quick tip. Today I will be teaching you how to get a SOLIDWORKS model into Blender and prepare it for rendering, animating, 3D printing, whatever you want to do with it. So I divided the process up in three easy steps. The first step is to save your parts or assembly as a mesh within SOLIDWORKS. The second step is to get this mesh into Blender. And the third step is to apply some modifiers to make it look right and prepare it for rendering. Now, as an added bonus, I will also be doing a quick render with some basic lights and a basic scene just to show you the process in some sped up footage. This is not a rendering tutorial, so it's just a bonus. So the first step is to get the mesh out of SOLIDWORKS. Now, for this, we will be using a STL file, which is the most basic kind of mesh uh, file that you can get. It just saves every location of every vertex of your model and then gives three pairs of vertices where a face should be placed. Now, if you don't understand what I'm saying, don't worry, we'll get right to it. It's also very important to, to go into the settings and change the resolution and make it a bit higher so we get a very nice high resolution mesh so we can use it for photorealistic rendering. The second step is to get this STL file into Blender, paying special attention to the correct scale and the correct rotation of our model. And then we will get this mesh ready for rendering. So that means we're going to smooth the model, we're going to add an edge split modifier, and we're gonna check for some errors if there are any. And as I said, as an added bonus, I will be showing you how to make this render really quickly, really easily within Blender. So let's get to it. So firstly, I'm going to open my model. In this case, I will be using a simple chair that I got off CrabCat. It's a very nice model. It's quite simple. It's got some simple curvature to it. And it's perfect for exporting as an STL file. To save the STL, I'm going to File and then Save As. I'm going to find where I want to save it. So in my case, that's this folder, Take Two. There we go. Now, I don't want to save it as an assembly. I actually want to save it as an STL file, .stl. You can use an OBG. There are a couple of file types that you can use, but STL works fine and is the most easy to use. So you can save it right away, but it's a better a better idea to go to the options first. So I'll click that. Then one thing to keep in mind, I'm using meters here. So STL doesn't really have a scale in meters or centimeters or inches or anything, uh, but it does use a certain number. A vertice is at a certain coordinate. And this number here will be given in meters. You can change it to millimeters if you want. I'm using meters as Blender uses them as well. So for the resolution, um, you can go coarse or fine. Um, there's also an option to add some custom settings, so you can get even finer by raising these sliders. But most of the time, fine works well. If you use coarse, then uh, rounded edges might seem very jagged uh, in the render. So we're going to use the fine setting here. Um, we're working with an assembly, and I find it easiest to have all components saved in a single file. So I don't have to... Um, mess with combining different parts later on. I just have everything at once and I can divide it up in Blender itself. So that looks good. And I'll go ahead and save that. You get a little preview of how the mesh will look, which looks fine to me. So let's save it. And there we go. Next, the next thing to do is open up a new instance of Blender. For this, I will be using Blender 7.8. This is just the default scene we have here. I'll delete everything, so I'll hit A and then X to delete everything. Uh, one thing I'll do first is I'll go to the Scene tab, and then under Units, you'll find the unit presets. Um, I'll be using the, let's see, where is it? For length, I will be using the metric system. So that's meters and centimeters. Um, as a default, it uses meters as the main unit. So that's just fine. Then I'll import my STL. So I go to File up here and then Import STL. And I'll go ahead and find my file. So for me, it's under Documents, uh, Quick Tips. There we go. Take, and here is it. Now I could just import it right away, but I like to make sure that the scale is right. So that's one, and we used um, we used meters as a unit in Sol in SolidWorks. Now, one thing to, to note is the um, rotation as well. So in SOLIDWORKS, the up rotation is most often the Y axis, as you can see here. And the front and back will be defined by the X axis. You can always look at this little 3D widget and see what's up, what's front. 
So Y is up, up, I'll select Y, and then for forward, I'll select X. There we go. So that looks fine, and I'll import it. And there we go. Looks a little bit small, so I just like to check the scale of this model. I will hit N to open this properties panel. And here under the scale uh, dimension, we can see that the model is about 80 centimeters high, which is fine for a chair. So that looks all right. So this is our model. Now, if I zoom in a little closer, you can see that the model looks kind of strange. This wooden part should be really soft and smooth. Well, you can see that there's all kind of jagged lines in it. That's because, because this is a mesh and a mesh is always made up of points which are called vertices. Uh, two points make a line and three points make a face. So these are all different faces and they are all shaded flat, which means they're all just flat faces as you can see here, but that isn't what we're looking for. So to fix this problem, um, let's say it's quite noticeable up here. There we go. I will go to the tools while having the object selected and then press smooth shading. So I'll press that, and that looks quite a bit better. It isn't perfect, uh, and it'll never be, because the meshes that SolarWorks produces, here you can see the mesh when I'm in edit mode, the meshes are really, really dirty and ugly. They're never, it's not really a big problem uh, when, when using SolarWorks itself, since, since you're not editing the mesh, but in Blender, it can you can run into some problems, sadly. So that looks smooth, but there's another problem. If I go to the back here, there's supposed to be some hard edges. If I go to edit mode again to show you the mesh, it's got some 90 degree angles, but Blender tries to smooth across these angles. So it's trying to do a weird blending type of effect, which is not what we want. So to get rid of this problem, we'll add a, add a modifier. So we go to the modifier panel, add a modifier, and here we're going to choose the edge split modifier. And that looks a a lot better immediately. Now, what an edge split modifier does is it's actually cutting away the uh, cutting the mesh into different pieces, actually, right where the sharp angles are. So if I apply this and go to edit mode, you can see that the mesh is actually cut it up into different pieces. So there's no more smoothing from one face to another because the faces aren't really connected. So I don't want this for the moment, so I'll just leave it with the edge split modifier. There we go. And now this looks really fine. So that's basically it actually. Uh, no, one more thing. Uh, you want some different materials, but this is just one object. As you can see, it's just one big mesh. So we want to separate it out into different parts. So for this, I will go to edit mode, which I'm in right now. You can see that here. Press A to select all. Press P to separate the different parts and then choose by loose parts. There we go. And just get back into object mode. So now we can see that there's all kinds of different parts. There we go. Now, since a couple of these parts will be having the same material and sharing the same location most of the time, I'll be selecting all the wooden parts in this case. So that's the back here, the shell as well. There we go, that's all the wood parts. And hit Control G to make that one object. And then for these seats as well, same thing. Control G, and there we go. So now we can go unwrapping, uh, unwrapping the object and making some materials for the rendering. So that's about it. This model is ready to get into the Cycles rendering engine or whatever rendering engine you're using. All right, so that is how you import a SolidWorks model into Blender and use it for rendering or animating or whatever you want to do with it really. So now as an added bonus, I'm just gonna skip ahead to a time, time lapse of me making a simple render of this chair using some simple lights and a default floor. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.